Hello dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques in Material Characterization Lecture number 29. Uh, this is uh, the lecture series on X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, uh, part number 6 of the lecture series. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will have a discussions on interpreting XPS uh, spectrum. So let proceed uh, towards uh, today's lecture. So normally whenever you have the XPS results, uh, so you will have a kind of a spectrum, uh, a typical one you can see it here uh, in this uh, figure. So here we, uh, we, we have uh, kinetic energy versus the binding energy. Uh, but here, if you have a clear look, uh, so you will observe that we have the number of the electrons and that have been plotting versus the binding energy. But we are saying that we have the kinetic energy versus the binding energy. So what is the logic behind? Uh, so we have uh, kinetic energy uh, that is uh, the being plotted uh, depending on the binding energy. So as a result of that, we have each peak and uh, those uh, I means uh, the, the, the several peaks uh, we have in the spectrum so each peak represents the amounts of the electron uh, at a certain energy that is the characteristic of uh, some element so just like i mentioned we have the binding energies and we have the kinetic energy of the electron so binding energy here you can see that uh, binding energy increases from uh, right to left I mean uh, if you want to move from here to here from right to left so the binding energy increases from right to left and on the other side we have kinetic energy so kinetic energy increases from uh, left to uh, right so how we interpret uh, the XPS spectrum so for that we have to go a bit in the backgrounds of the XPS analysis. So be remember uh, uh, during the XPS analysis uh, the key thing that we have is uh, X-ray. So the X-ray uh, will have the electrons uh, in the bulk of the sample. I mean uh, we, we, we have the X-ray and with that X-ray uh, we basically hit uh, our sample, our bulk uh, sample. Uh, what it mean? It mean that uh, we, we normally have an X-ray source and the XPS. So with that X-ray source, we generate the X-ray. So that X-ray had the electrons and the bulk. Uh, from bulk, we mean the inner layers of the uh, sample. So as a result of that, the electrons uh, will collide with other electrons from the top layers. So uh, this basically decreasing its binding energy uh, that contributes to the noise at a lower kinetic energy uh, than uh, the peak. So the background noise, uh, which you can see it here, we have plotted here uh, in this particular uh, spectrum. So here you can see that the noise we have represented by uh, N. So here we can see we have several noise peaks. So the background noise uh, increases with the binding energy, which you can observe. So here's the binding energy. So with increase in the binding energy, the noise uh, is also increasing. So the sum of all the noise is taken from the beginning of the analysis. And here you can see the total noise, uh, which is the sum of the uh, noises uh, at each uh, stage. So the XPX spectrum, uh, uh, I mean the, the XPX peaks are sharp, uh, we, we, we have, uh, I mean we, we can easily observe later on in this lecture. So in an in, in XPS uh, graph, it is possible to see the outer electrons peak. I mean in the next slide, uh, you will definitely see that, the, how the outer electrons peak look like and where it basically it lies. Uh, along with that, the outer peaks are usually wider peaks. Uh, in the XPX spectrum uh, and for that we will consider the example of aluminium foil uh, that has been used an example uh, and here is that uh, you can see it's the aluminium foil uh, XPS uh, survey so here you can see 
uh, I mean uh, the different peak we have the hours of uh, peak for the oxygens and here you can see uh, we have oxygens because of uh, magnesium so this is the, the typical XP, XPS spectrum of the uh, aluminium's uh, foil. So here you can see, uh, I mean, we have the outer peak. And just like I mentioned on the previous slide, that the outer peak is a bit wider as compared to the other uh, as compared to the other fee. So here, uh, I mean, uh, the different parameters of the XPS survey, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's the time uh, when we want to analyze the sample so the parameters that are being utilized has all uh, i mean all the, those parameters that are being uh, mentioned uh, here so it is basically i mean uh, is basically needed for the technicians who want to run uh, the sample so they they require uh, this parameter i mean they require their sort of the knowledge uh, whenever they're trying to analyze uh, a particular uh, sample so uh, here you can see another outer spectrum so uh, if you have a clear look here so we have a characteristic auger graph uh, and here you can see uh, the graph goes off as the kinetic energy increases so last time we mentioned how the kinetic energy increase so here you can see i mean it's the characteristic of auger graph uh, and here you can easily find uh, that the graph goes off uh, as uh, the kinetic energy uh, increases so identification of the XPS peak, I mean, it's normally a question uh, that people ask that how you can identify the peak uh, in the XPS uh, spectrum. So let's talk about that. Uh, first of all, when you analyze your sample uh, during the XPS analysis, so you get a plot. And uh, with that plot, uh, I mean, you have characteristic peak for each element found and the surface of the sample. I mean, first of all, you get the, the, the plot, you get the, 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 you get the spectrum uh, that we call the XPS survey. I mean, it's almost like, uh, I mean, uh, it's look like almost the same, uh, I mean, uh, the one we, we have for uh, uh, XRD. But you cannot say that X is the same. I mean, I mean, just like, uh, we're just talking about the, the similarity between the, the spectrum and the look about the spectrum. So we get we get a spectrums uh, that we call it survey. So in that we have a different peak, and each peak and that spectrum it represents a different element uh, in the uh, sample which we characterize. So uh, what actually we do once we get that uh, spectrums or with the uh, different characteristic peak for a different element so uh, then what actually we do uh, we have tables uh, with the kinetic energy and binding energy that are already been assigned to each element i mean we have some standard uh, tables uh, where we have plotted the kinetic energy and binding energy to the standard uh, elements or uh, their uh, compound so uh, after that when we plot our uh, our spectrum or our survey so then uh, uh, we look for the peak, uh, I mean, that we have got in our survey and our XPS survey. So we have to look for those peak and the, uh, the standard table. So uh, we, we're trying to match that uh, with the standard uh, elements or compound and that uh, standard table. And on the basis of that, uh, we say that uh, this particular element or this particular peak corresponds to uh, that particular element. But we remember in modern XPS operators, uh, uh, we have this Belton facility uh, that sometime, uh, I mean, it's, it's more often uh, that it take the element, uh, I mean, uh, once it's pounded. I mean, it's normally it take the individual's uh, element once it's pounded in your uh, sample. If your sample is known and your technician is, uh, is a good expert in the XPS analysis, uh, so he can, uh, I mean, takes uh, your element that's been found in the surface of, uh, in the surface of your uh, sample. So uh, how we differentiate X-rays uh, and the electron are, uh, we said that how we do the comparison of X-ray uh, with the electron. So we remember X-ray has all the sample areas simultaneously. Uh, permitting data acquisitions that will give an idea of an average composition of the whole 
uh, surface so unlike that the electron a fusion electron so you know that uh, that we mentioned in the uh, same analysis uh, that electron can be focused on a particular area of the sample uh, and it's used to determine the composition of selected areas of uh, the surface uh, sample uh, now the question is uh, that uh, where we can utilize uh, the XPS technology or where uh, we can best uh, utilize uh, the XPS uh, analysis. So here are some uh, good examples in the modern science and technology that uh, I mean normally the, person, the people also question that why, uh, why we use the XPS uh, technology. So we remember we consider the XPS uh, technology for uh, I mean for elemental composition at the surface of a materials which is particularly important for uh, the nano size structure for nano uh, material uh, and the reason for this is that it's a non-destructive uh, technique and uh, uh, why is non-destructive technique because it produces soft x-ray to induce photoelectron emissions from the sample uh, surface so as a result of that it's been considered as a non-destructive technique and it provide information about the surface layer or thin film uh, structure so in the case of nano we say that majority of the atom they are lying at the surface as compared to the volume so for that the xps analysis is very 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 important if you know about uh, I mean, if you know about the uh, the surface, I mean uh, the 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 add, the element at the surface. So you know about uh, the structures of the uh, you know about the compositions of the uh, your sample very easily because majority of the atoms they are found in the surface uh, regarding the nanomaterials. So applications of the XPS technology included uh, polymer surface. I mean, it's being used in polymer technology, uh, catalysts. A uh, corrosion, additions, a uh, semiconductor, dielectric materials, electronic packing, uh, magnetic media, and thin film uh, coating. I mean, uh, nanotechnology uh, uh, have uh, the applications of the XPS. Uh, since uh, we mentioned at this uh, at the start of this, uh, I mean, lecture series on the XPS, that XPS is a surface uh, sensitive uh, technique. So because of this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we also mentioned about the nano. The nano have all the element, the surface as compared to the volume. So in this sense, uh, XPS is particularly important for the characterization of nanostructure uh, material. So that's all uh, we have for the XPS analysis. Uh, thanks for watching. See you in next uh, techniques uh, very soon. Uh, till then, bye bye.